Hello everyone. Today, we're gonna get real and dive deep into the world of relationships. Whether you're booed up or still trying to shoot your shot, this one's for you. Real talk. Every relationship is gonna hit some turbulence along the way. Maybe your partner left you on read for a hot minute, or they made a low-key shady comment about you in front of the squad. Could even be something more major like forgetting a birthday or catching feelings for someone else. Whatever the case, these little bumps in the road are what therapists call ruptures. Now don't get it twisted. Ruptures don't automatically mean your relationship is due. It's totally normal for trust and good vibes to take a hit sometimes. What really matters is how you handle it when it hits the fan. That's where repair comes in. See, repairing a rupture is basically doing the work to regain each other's trust and get those warm fuzzy feelings flowing again. It's about reminding your partner that deep down, you're a solid person who can vibe with their needs and has their back, even after dropping the ball. Psychologists say repair skills are like the MVPs of emotional maturity. It's what separates the real ones from the rookies. So what exactly are we working with here? Let me break it down. Skill hash one. A legit apology. Yeah, I know, saying sorry doesn't seem so tough, right? But a real, meaningful apology low-key requires putting a dent in your ego. Think about it. Owning up to your mistakes means calling yourself out on your own BS. Whether that's being a hothead, an insecure control freak, or just a straight up dummy sometimes. When your self-esteem is already taking LS, it can feel like swallowing mad truth pills to admit you messed up again. You might worry an apology won't cut it or that your partner will just see you as a lost cause. But dodging accountability by playing the denial game never ends well. A true apology shows you're self-aware enough to check yourself before you wreck yourself and the relationship. It's a humble move, but one that lets your partner know you respect them enough to work on your issues. Skill hash two, forgiveness, just like apologizing. Being able to actually accept someone's mind bad and forgive them can low-key be harder than it looks. It means having the empathy to understand that good people don't always act right 100% of the time. We all get tired, stressed, moody or just straight up weak sometimes. When you forgive someone, you're giving them the benefit of the doubt that they didn't mean to be a whole jerk. You're recognizing they're a flawed human, just like you. Holding grudges or writing someone off as canceled slash redeemable just because they messed up is a slippery slope to being bitter and alone. Therapists say this all or nothing mindset where people are either perfect or trash is called splitting. It's basically our brain's self-defense mechanism against inevitable disappointment. We'd rather just believe everyone sucks so we don't get hurt again. But life's not that black and white. The mature thing is learning to accept shades of gray and adopting a nobody is perfect mentality. That's the only way to avoid eternally writing off anyone who hurts you, no matter how unintentional. Skill hash three, teaching tactfully, a lot of ruptures happen because someone was low-key trying to get a point across, but their delivery was whack. Like if your partner blows up about how you need to handle your fam better or stop being so thirsty on the ground. Their intentions might have been decent, but the execution was trash. Good communicators know that teaching someone something new is an art that requires being self-aware and patient. You can't go in thinking the other person's automatically gonna understand you or be receptive. Instead, you speak their language, go at their pace, and leave room for different perspectives without arguing. Having chill and realistic expectations, rather than stubbornly digging in, prevents petty arguments from snowballing into full-blown beef. At the end of the day, you might have to agree to disagree on certain things and accept a little bit of being misunderstood, even by your partner. That's just life. Skill hash four. Being a student too, this one's simple, but super important. You gotta stay open to learning and catching feedback from your partner. Yeah, 
It's not fun to have someone critique you or point out your growth areas. But think about it. If someone's invested enough in you to keep it real, even about the not-so-pretty stuff, that low-key means they see your potential. Too many of us get defensive or claim we already knew that when someone shares some real talk. But that attitude is weak and will only stunt your glow up. The smart move is to approach every suggestion or critique as an opportunity to level up and mature. At the end of the day, we're all works in progress. Judging by your partner's advice rather than being a humble student just means you're not that serious about self-improvement. And what's the point of a relationship if you both can't motivate each other to be better? All right, hopefully this all makes sense so far. We've covered the four core skills to being a repair master. Sincere apologies, forgiveness, teaching tactfully, and staying a student. Put those into practice and you'll already be leagues ahead of the games a lot of immature folks are playing out here. But let's take this one step for there with an analogy that Loki made me see repair in a whole new light. So in Japan, there's this dope ancestral art called kintsugi where they mend broken pottery with a lacquer made of actual gold. Instead of trying to disguise the cracks and flaws, these repair pieces are celebrated as unique and beautiful works of art. How fire is that? These artists basically take something broken and make the repairs part of the appeal. And we'd all be wise to approach our love lives with a similar mentality. Look, every relationship is bound to get a little scratched and dented here and there. Expecting perfection is just setting yourself up for disappointment. But each time you overcome a rupture and lean into the repair process with self-love, communication and care, you're strengthening the foundation and making something stronger and more beautiful. Those periodic rough patches, they give you the chance to practice humility, patience, courage and compassion, all the ingredients of unconditional love. And when you get skilled at repair, rocky moments become about growth rather than blowing everything up over ego and hurt feelings. At the end of the day, putting in that repair work separates the real ones from the rookies. It's what lets you look at your relationship as a legit piece of art worth preserving, flaws and all, rather than just tossing it when things get tough. Because real intimacy and trust, that's something precious that gets built over time through all the small wins and losses. It's about sticking beside your person, mess ups and all, and handling the rough patches with grace and love instead of giving up. That level of care and craftsmanship is where the magic happens. So there you have it y'all, a master class in building up that repair game so you can beat the odds and go the distance, whether it's with your current situationship or a future bay. Feel free to run this back a few times until it kicks in. Just remember, ruptures are inevitable, but the ability to work through them with emotional skills like humility, empathy, and resilience, that's what separates the rookies from the legends. So make sure you're developing that relationship playbook and leveling up your repair status. You'll thank me later. For now though, I gotta run. Catch you on the next episode. And if this was worth your time, do me a solid and hit that like and subscribe before you ghost. Peace.